In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this Sunday's Gospel, our Lord gives us a parable of two men who walk into the temple at the same time in order to pray. One of them is a Pharisee, the other one is a publican. And uh, while it seems like they're doing the same thing, right? they're going into the temple to pray, the, the way that they pray is, is very, very different. And the fruits of their prayer is very, very different. Because in the one case, God accepts their prayer, uh, his prayer, and, uh, uh, and the man goes home justified. And in the other case, God rejects his prayer, and the man goes home with his sins still weighing down upon his soul. And what was the big difference between the prayer of these two men? Well, it was, uh, it was not just the words that they used, but the, the spirit that inspired them. It was what was going on in their, in their hearts. Because the one man was inspired by pride and by self-love. The other man, on the other hand, was inspired by humility. Okay? And, and the prayer, of course, of the humble man is, is the one that's heard. Um, and it's interesting that our, our Lord you know, chooses men from two very different states of life. Right? The, the Pharisee, which is the one whose prayer was rejected, you know, he's one of the religious leaders of Israel. He's, uh, he belongs to this particular sect, the Pharisees, which uh, you know, had, a very, uh, uh, they had a very strict external observance of the law. You know, and people tended to look up to them as, as being godly men. And yet this is the man whose prayer was rejected. Right? The, the other one, the publican, you know, what was he? He, was, uh, uh, he? Basically, he was a tax collector working for the occupying Roman government. He made a living by, by extorting his fellow Jews. Um, he was a public sinner, so people would have naturally despised him, looked on him with contempt. Um, and yet this man, the public sinner, is the one who, who went home justified. You know? And why is that? Because, well, because he humbly repented of his sins, and he, he offered a prayer that was truly, that was truly humble uh, before God. And so um, you know, the, the lesson, obviously, here is that uh, if we want our prayer to be heard, you know, it has to be a humble prayer rather than a proud one, right? And these are words, you know, humility, pride, that we, you know, often we hear them, at least in, in, in Christian circles, we hear them, but uh, very often we don't even know what they mean, right? Uh, I guess a, a textbook definition of pride would be uh, the disordered preoccupation with one's own excellence, okay? The proud man, in other words, is, is always wrapped up in himself. He's concerned about how, good he is, how intelligent he is, how talented, talented he is. Um, he's, he's always comparing himself to other creatures, comparing himself favorably to other creatures. And, and you see this very much in the prayer of the Pharisee, right? He's, uh, it's interesting. He comes into the temple and it says he's standing and that he, he prayed thus with himself. Okay, Standing, what does it mean? He, he puts himself almost on a par with God. Right, here he is. He's coming into, into God's house. He should be coming in like a, like a beggar on his knees asking God for mercy. Instead, he's standing upright as if he were talking with God as equals, uh, as peers. And then it's very interesting. Some of the fathers of the church note this, that he's, he, he prayed thus with himself. You know, it's almost like he's not really praying to God. It's, it's like he's talking to himself. And what does he say when, he, when he's talking to himself this way? He's, he's giving this litany of all of his good works which he thinks makes him, make him such a, a wonderful person. Okay. Um, and you, you notice the things that he doesn't do. He doesn't ask God for mercy. He doesn't acknowledge his littleness, uh, his weakness. He doesn't ask God to protect him against falling into sin. He doesn't come before God as a, as a beggar before a rich man, but as a, a rich man who, who thinks that he has everything. Okay. And on the one hand, he, he starts off by, by thanking God. He says, oh God, I give thee thanks. But he's thanking God for all the wrong things. Um, and, and we could ask ourselves, is he really thanking God? You know, he, because he's, what, is he, what he's doing is he's attributing to himself the credit for all the, the good works that he, that he does. You know, it's, it's almost like, okay, God gave me this grace because I deserved it. God gave me this grace because I'm such a wonderful person, because I somehow earned it or merited it. Um, and so this, this um, you know, it, it, it's kind of uh, the proof that, you know, that his, his prayer wasn't really humble, okay, because he somehow thought that he, he had a right to be there in God's presence, okay, and, uh, and that, he, that he had earned the, whatever graces he had received. Um, our founder, Father Stefano Manelli, in one conference, he, he put it very well. He said that the proud man is essentially a thief, okay, 
what do we mean by that? Um, it doesn't mean that he's somebody who goes into a supermarket and pockets bubble gum like a little kid or whatever. Um, no, the problem is a thief because he's stealing for himself credit doesn't, that doesn't belong to him. Right? Um, he may have particular natural gifts, intelligence and talents and, and et cetera. And instead of giving God the glory for these things, because God is the one who gave him all these, these abilities, uh, instead he, want, he, he gives himself the credit for them. And he wants other people to, uh, to attribute that credit to him. You know, it'd be sort of like if, uh, you know, if you had a friend that was, a, that was a, an artist and the, uh, you know, your artist came over to your house one day and he was carrying this big portrait that he had just done and he, he unwraps it and, and it's a masterpiece. And he says, you know what I'd like to do with this portrait? You say, what? He says, I'd like to hang it up in your living room so that your friends and family can, can see it. And, and you say, oh, wow, wonderful. And you, and you hang it up in your living room. And then your friends and your family come over and, they say, and they, their jaws drop looking at this portrait. And, and they say, where did this come from? And you say, well, you see, I went down to the, the university and I took some art courses and I got some paint. And, you know, you're a thief if you do that. Okay? It's not your portrait. It may be hanging up in your living room, okay? but you can't take credit for it. It was a gift that was given to you. You might even say on loan, because that artist has every right to come to your home and to, and to claim it back, especially if he finds out that you're taking the credit for it. Okay. Well, that's exactly what we do whenever we start feeling good about ourselves for, for some beautiful prayer that we've said, for some virtuous act that we've committed, or, or for some natural gift that we have. Uh, um, you know, we're taking credit for the works of God, okay? and we're stealing from him the glory. Okay? Um, the truly humble man, on the other hand, recognizes that he can, he can glory in only one thing. There's only one thing that he can take credit for himself and claim is exclusively his own. And what's that? It's his sins. Okay? And so the only thing that I can take credit for and glory in is exclusively my own is my sins. Okay? And the same thing applies for each one of you. And the sooner we learn that lesson, uh, the better, because that will put us on the road to truth. Okay? And so if we wanted to have a, you know, a good definition of humility, which is the virtue you know, which opposes pride, it's, uh, it's that, that, there's that beautiful definition which St. Teresa of Avila gave it. She said, humility is walking in the truth. Okay. The truth of recognizing that, that you have no good thing in your life which you didn't receive from someone else. And therefore, you can't take credit for any good thing that you have in your life. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and this is, is, is in fact, the, the attitude that we find in the publican. Okay. The publican had been a public sinner, this extortioner, this tax collector. Okay. But what does he do? He doesn't come in and you know, recite some litany of his alleged virtues. He doesn't come in and, and compare himself to other creatures, okay? Because he recognizes that it's stupid to compare ourselves to other creatures. He compares himself to God alone. And when you do that, you always fall short, right? Because how can any of us compare to the infinite majesty, the perfect goodness of God? And so he comes in. He doesn't recite a litany of his, of his virtues. He doesn't compare himself to other creatures. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't claim any glory for any good thing. The only thing he claims credit, glory and credit for is, is his sins. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Okay. And if you and I pray that way, then yes, our prayer, and if we pray it from the heart, then our prayer will be heard by God. And uh, we'll be walking in the truth. And we'll be walking on the way that leads to everlasting life. For he that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.